Hi, I'm Nicky Gardner and I'm a learning developer with WDC. And in this video, we're going to think a little bit about communicating online in an academic context. So with the move to online learning, you may have found that a lot of the academic discussions that you're having are now taking place in these kind of unfamiliar new environments like webinars or messaging boards. Uh, and a lot of conversations that I've been having with students recently is about the, the best or perhaps most appropriate way of communicating in these strange new environments. And that's not really surprising um, because you may have a lot of experience communicating online through particular mediums like instant messaging or social media or through good old email. Um, and depending on where you are in your academic studies, you'll probably have some degree of experience in communicating within an academic context. So that might be through a regular face-to-face -face seminars or through research papers. But what you might have a little bit less experience with is communicating in this strange third space that's now emerging, which is the online academic environment. So in this video, we're gonna think a little bit about the kind of difficulties that might be raised in these new environments and some possible strategies for helping to adapt to them. So obviously one of the biggest differences that you might be faced with is the increased sense of distance between you and the person that you're talking to, both in terms of space and time. So not only are you no longer sharing a physical environment, but if you're using asynchronous forms of communication, uh, such as discussion boards, there may be an anticipated time delay. And what that means is that the dynamic between you and the other people you're talking to will shift slightly. Now, for some people, this increased sense of distance might feel almost liberating because it removes some of the social anxiety that might come alongside having a face-to-face -face discussion when you feel like you need to provide the response right there in the moment to the person who's right in front of you. This might be especially true if you're communicating through text, such as through email discussion boards or the webinar chat function, because it gives you a little bit more time to think about and formulate your response. So for some people this can diffuse the anxiety that often comes with having to verbally articulate your response and the kind of um, improvisational nature of speech, which is very difficult to prepare for. So there are definitely some benefits to moving the conversation online, but with it, you might find also new types of difficulties emerging. And what you might actually find is that the social anxiety or pressure associated with face-to-face -face seminars hasn't entirely disappeared, but actually re-emerges in slightly new forms, particularly the pressure to provide a more fully crafted response to the conversation prompts. Now that you've got a bit more time and space to think about your response, you may find yourself starting to worry about how uh, sophisticated or articulate your response is. Again, this is even more likely if you're communicating through writing because we normally encounter academic writing in a very formal context like journal articles or research papers. And so you may feel that your writing style or use of language will be judged to these same standards. But here's the key point. In an online discussion, you won't be expected to articulate your ideas with the same degree of polish or formality as if you were producing a written academic assignment. And doing so can actually be counterproductive. And that's because academic discussions and academic assignments have very different communicative goals. So the goal or agenda of an academic research paper is essentially to provide a fully formed and coherent argument and to persuade the reader of the validity of that argument. Whereas in contrast, the goal of an academic discussion is just to give you the space to try out new ideas, opinions, theories, or perspectives and develop them in conversation with your course mates or teaching staff. So with that in mind, your responses don't have to be fully refined or polished. And in fact, doing so can actually hinder the conversation. Because if you see a comment that is beautifully worded and very, very coherent, it can be hard to think about 
what a way into that conversation might be. Or you might feel a bit intimidated to engage in that discussion. What this can often lead to then is an opinion pile up where everyone just puts their opinion without actually having much discussion or interaction between the different points of view, which is ultimately the point of an academic discussion. Now obviously getting used to these new online academic environments will take a bit of time and practice. And if you're feeling the pressure to polish and refine your responses, there are a couple of little things that you might be able to try. First of all, you could try imposing some artificial restrictions on your responses. So those might be time-based, such as giving yourself uh, no more than two minutes to respond in a synchronous discussion, or no more than 20 minutes to respond in an asynchronous discussion. Or maybe they could be based on edits, uh, limiting your read-throughs of your comments to a maximum of two. Now these very artificial limits are totally up to you and can and should be tweaked based on what you think is appropriate in the situation. But just by having them in place, it can help remind us of the communicative goal of a discussion, which is communication, not perfection. Another approach could be just to embrace the uncertainties that you may have when commenting on an issue. By admitting that you're not 100% sure on a point of view, it gives others a clearer opportunity to join into the conversation. And don't be afraid to change your mind, particularly if you find another person's perspective uh, particularly persuasive or convincing. After all, academic discussions aren't debates to be won, but tools to help you develop your own thoughts. So that's all for this video, but if you found it useful or have further questions about communicating online in an academic context, you might want to check out the Academic Skills Kit and some of the resources we have on there. Um, or alternatively, you might want to book a one-to-one -one appointment with the WDC where you can have a one-to-one -one conversation with one of our tutors.